Welcome to another episode of This Week in Mobile. Join me, Ashley Esqueda, and my co-host, Mike Hobbs, as we celebrate the best in mobile for 2010. It's This Week in Mobile, and it's happening right now. Hey everybody, welcome to another episode of This Week in Mobile, our very last of the year. I'm your host, Ashley Skeva, and joining me as always in studio is my delightful co-host, Mike Hobbs. Right. Hi, Mike. Hi. I dressed up in my finest. You look great. In my finest leopard print dress. Look, looks great. Green. I have my Android kicks on, yeah. too, to match. Oh, can people see those? I would prefer not to swing my leg up on the desk. Oh, me too. And fortunately this year, um, well, this is pretty indicative of how the year went. Well, maybe No, not. I don't know about that. But it's still pretty great. <laughs> that's a scene. I say, I, that's, a, that's a scene of death. It's an uplifting scene. Destruction. Apparently, they're reviving him. Oh. I thought they had killed him. Maybe they killed him, and now they're reviving him as an apple zombie. Oh, interesting. I hadn't thought of that one. That's an interesting concept. I really don't like it. This is our last episode of the year. Oh. It's, it's the end of 2010. Gosh, it... It's 2011. We're only a scant two years away from the end of the world. Is that right, or was it one year? December 2012. I know. We're only we're close. Well, we better we're getting there. Better make the most of it That's by right. doing our best of 2010. <laughs> um, I am really excited. You can follow us on Twitter at twi underscore mobile. Um, you can email us your thoughts mobile at thisweekend.com, and you can subscribe and rate every one of our shows at youtube.com slash show slash thisweekendmobile. Um, are you ready to uh, you ready to get into this? Oh I'm, wait, wait, you know what? Before that, yeah. Before that, I do in fact want to talk about our amazing sponsor, Vopium. This is Vopium's lovely logo, Reach the World for Less. That's what they do. Mm -hmm. It's New Year's Eve, and if you're like me, you make calls every hour on the hour to friends in every single time zone to wish them a Happy New Year. You got a and lot of friends. And sing Lang Syne. Yeah. I do that a lot. Um, and you know, those international calls used to be super expensive, but not this year, everybody, because I'm using Vopium. Vopium lets you make super, super cheap international calls, 90% off of regular charges. Mm. It's really dirt cheap. Impressive. Are you going to call me from uh, in, from Japan? Of course. In fact, this will be my the first best chance I've had to use Vopium. Yeah, because you'll, you'll be away. I'll be overseas. Be great. I'll be away. I'm going to call you. Please. And I'm going to tell everyone how incredibly cheap it was to call Mike on New Year's Eve. Yeah. And tell him, Happy New Year! And yeah. start screaming in his face. Yeah. Like I don't do that every week. Yeah. Um, anyway... You can actually call, if you use Wi-Fi with Vopium, it, you can make free international calls, which is pretty great. Mm. And if you use it on a 3G network, you make a call internationally, and it'll reroute your international call as a local call to Vopium, who then makes your international call for you. You pay Vopium cheap international rates, and then you pay your provider for almost nothing on your local fees. Mm. Pretty awesome. Clever. If you want to get in on the action, you can download Vopium's mobile app for free. It's in Apple's App Store, Android Market, Nokia's OV Store, and BlackBerry App World. And when you sign up, you get 15 minutes of call time and 30 international text messages for free. So what are you waiting for? Vopium.com. That's V-O-P-I-U-M.com. Mike, it's time for our best of. Hooray. The best of 2010. Oh, I thought a graphic would come up, but I don't think. Not is. yet. Not yet. The best of 2010! Yay! Yay. This is great. Are you excited? All right, let's start with our very first category, the best Android device. Yep. There were a lot of them. Indeed, too As many. We are, you, oh, you say too many, I say better to have a wide variety. Mm. Quantity over quality, you say. I like, no, I like both. You can't Beca have both. And that's what brings me to my winner this year. Let's hear it. The HTC Evo 4G, oh. ladies and gentlemen. Yeah. I had to pick the Evo. It has been such a great phone this mm. year. It's been a wonder to use after upgrading from a Palm Pre. There's so much packed into it. And as America's real first 4G phone, you can't you can't miss out. There's a huge New Year's Eve party happening outside. If you can hear the cheering, people are freaking out. We got to get out there and get drinking with everyone. Nope. <laughs> so... That's, I mean, that's what I wanted to pick. The HTC Evo, that's my Android phone of the year. What yeah, about you? That's a good one. Well, I mean, for me, it was, I only had one choice, the Nexus S. It's a good choice. It's a good choice, because uh, I had, I like the Samsung, I like what they do. Only their... out for 15 days this year. Um, oh, that's true. And your phone of the year. That's true, that's true, but it's the latest. Latest and greatest. Latest and greatest, and I had to pick that one. I like the curb display. It's kind of a gimmick, but it's neat. It's kind of neat. it's very nice. And the design's pretty nice. It's light, like their Focus, which I like. I think it has real world benefits mm -hmm. to that. Um, so Nexus S has, you know, and also straight um, Android. Stock Android. Stock Android. Very important. And the only phone currently to have gingerbread. Stock Android. So you're always going to be up to date. You don't have, you don't have that mm -hmm. awful thing of waiting months for updates. 
Yeah, that is true. That is the one detriment for the HTC so, Evo. For me, XSS, that's the one I would get. Okay, our next category. Mm. Best iOS device. Oh, yeah. So, on this one, you know, a lot of people say, oh, best iOS device, that's obviously the iPhone. Well, there's more than one device that has iOS on it, and I picked the iPad, because mm -hmm. really, it took the cake as far as iOS went this year to me. It blew open the tablet market doors in a huge way um, that I don't think really anybody saw coming. I think people knew it was going to be extremely popular, but not at the level that it was this I, year. I recall actually a lot of skepticism about it. There was a lot of skepticism. Before it came people out, like, people, they, all they did was scale up an I, I, It's just a big iPod Touch. It's a giant And it is. It really is. But, but that people love it. So well. People wanted that. Yep. And, um, you know, it's a great device, even though I'm supposed to technically despise Apple. It's It really is a great device. <laughs> no, and, you're... you know, I can't I can't knock it for what it is. And mm -hmm. there's a couple of key features on it that I would like to have had, like a front-facing camera and maybe a USB port or some kind of removable storage. But mm -hmm. I think at least one of those issues is going to be cleared up with the iPad 2 next year. So yeah. my best iOS device, iPad. Very nice. How about you? Well, for me, it was uh, the iPhone 4. I was you one of those people that, um, uh, you know, I, you know, I was going to pick it, but I did pick it because uh, it ticks all the boxes. It has everything. It has the Retina display. It has 512 megabytes of RAM, which the iPad and the iPod Touch don't. Um, it has finally got multitasking. It, well, it's had that, but yeah, you can get that on the other ones. But I mean, it has the industrial design that's beautiful. It is a very um, nice, except for the, except for the, the attenuation issue, which is mostly overblown. I mean, did they didn't. Did they change it? Did people keep complaining? It went away. No. It was. They don't think it was really a real issue. Um, the gyro. So it has it all. iPhone four. That's the one to get. It's really. I mean, it's a nice device. Not as good as my Evo, I don't think. But yeah, it's right. very nice. I think it's better. All right. Um, our next category is best Windows Phone 7 device. Mm. And uh, surprisingly, Mike and I were unanimous on this one. This is our only category <laughs> that we both agreed on. Yep. One hundred percent. Yep. And that phone is. The Samsung Focus. Um, um. It's a great phone. It's a nice OS for a fledgling operating system. Mm -hmm. the, I think Windows Phone 7 surprised us in a lot of ways when we got to use it. Mm -hmm. um, the camera was really amazing. It's a fluid phone. The hardware is just amazing. Mm -hmm. I loved the hardware on the Focus. And uh, really great job to Samsung on this device. I mean, it, it really is the best out there for Windows Phone 7 as far as Mike and I are concerned. I think so, because yeah. of the display. And um, like I said, I like the lightness of it. It is I mean, very light. It's, it's like real nice. Just it was weird. It was like holding a feather when I, mean, I was testing it. It was like compared to my Evo, it was yeah. just like, oh my gosh. So on the one hand, that sort of feels not premium, but on the other hand, it, is, it has a benefit, which is it's, you know, light. It's easy to take out of your pocket and put it back in and all this. Yeah, yeah. So best Windows Phone 7 device, the Samsung Focus. Congratulations, Samsung. It's really great. Keep we up like the it. good work. Yeah, yeah. Oh, that brings us to our next topic, the biggest blunder of 2010. The biggest mm -hmm. blunder. I had to go with the obvious for me, which was I really felt that BB6 and the BlackBerry Torch were just a disaster. I mean, it was just, it It was a horrible joke of a phone. I mean, I know some people out there really love their BlackBerry Torches, and all 10 of you can have that, and that's fine. But for me, it's a giant flop. I mean, the Torch, really, mm -hmm. they didn't revolutionize anything, and especially when Windows Phone 7 came out this year, Android really made great strides with Froyo, and iOS 4 came out this year. Sure. I mean, RIM just found itself really in a tough spot. Yeah, no, it's just way too little, too late, and they didn't really know that until it came out. Yeah. And they really they burned them. And, you know, even RIM CEO Mike Laz um, Lazaridis couldn't mm -hmm. give a straight answer at All Things D about where the handheld, the mobiles, oh, right. were going next year. Yeah, they I mean, had... he just tap danced around the issue and kept coming back to the playbook. <laughs> right, right. So, eh, I don't know about that. What doesn't, about you? What's your confidence. biggest blunder this year? Well, it might be an easy one, but the, <laughs> the white iPhone. That is quite a blunder. That's a debacle. That is, that is a, that's happened? actually, I mean, that's embarrassing. I mean, really. That's an embarrassing. To announce it, to say it's coming, and then to just have it Get kind of Get people all amped up about it. And it's just for, you know, something you think is pretty simple. And there's always been a white sank option. Sank into the wasteland. And for whatever reason, who knows? You can't actually know. There no are rumors know. about light white. Leak, light leak. Camera, or, um, lens leaking. The, or the white changing over time, yeah, discoloring. the white discoloration. Not up I mean, to Steve's stuff. standards. I, no <laughs> matching colors yeah, on certain right, things. Right, right. I mean, just. But for yeah. whatever reason, it never came out. It still say it might come out in spring. I doubt it. But at I'd, that by, point, then it's no the next one's going to buy the, I, why? It's iPhone 5 at that it's point. It's iPhone 5. No one's going to, so, no one's going to. So it'll be found, iPhone 5 will be found in some bar next March, and they're never going to release the white, they're never going to release the white iPhone. No, which uh, some people have probably won some bets, yeah. saying it will never come out. It'll and never sure come enough, out. It never did. Did we ever make that bet? 
I'm going to go back into the archives and check because oh, I think check, we talked right? about we it at some point. So. We may have made bets about that. Right. Um, all right, let's move on to our next category, which is Game of the Year. Yep. All right, Game yep. of the Year. A lot of people are expecting us to say a certain game with a certain number of feathered fowl. Upset. Upset fowl mm -hmm. and very conniving pork products. Bovine. Bo no, not bovine. No. It's a cow. Yeah, it's cows. Yeah. Sorry. There's no such thing as the word I'm looking sneaky for. cows. Regardless. I'm going to make that game. <laughs> My game of the year, not Angry Birds, in fact, I picked Pocket Legends. Oh. I, uh, I've got a really soft, a big soft spot in my heart for MMORPGs, and, you know, Space Time Studios, I really felt like they just knocked it out of the park with this fantastic, fun little game. It's addicting. I mean, I play it all the time. It's pretty vast mm -hmm. for a mobile phone game. Yep. I love the freemium concept where you get a couple of areas for free, you can level up to a certain point, and then beyond that, you can buy with Platinum different levels, different areas, which have, you know, 30 quests in them, and uh, it's really great, and I'm, I am really looking forward to seeing what Pocket Pocket Legends does next year with the advent of dual core phones. So, I, I mean, Pocket Legends is Pocket Legends for me, yeah. 100%. That's a cute game. I like it. It's it looks great. Good. It's great. I, I really would like to talk to Space Time because Gary Gaddis, Gary Gaddis and I had a long conversation when he was working with Star Wars Galaxies about smugglers and the Imperial Army. Imperials. I was a big Imperial. Don't like, know what you're Emperor, talking about. Star Wars. Yep. Um, but uh, but we had some talks about game mechanics and whatnot. I'd love to have him back on the show because he oh. he is one of the co-founders of Space Time. Oh, Studios. interesting. Well, I love mechanics. Yeah. So, uh, Mike, what's your game of the year? Well, again, this is uh, kind of like you know the Academy Awards things win that come out close to the awards. Well, close to award season. Yeah. Infinity Blade just came out, and it's my game, of, iPhone game of the year. It is really beautiful. I mean, it's not only is it a beautiful, amazing looking game that you can show off to your friends, but it's incredibly fun. The game, the design of the game, the mechanics of the uh, the combat are really addicting. It, mm -hmm. I mean, it, it, it feels, to me, it's like playing a console game. It's that same level of sophistication That's and addiction. Great. It's great. Um, the RPG elements. And are you can't really beat that. Awesome. Leveling up and, you know, getting new equipment and all this stuff. Uh, it's really fun and addictive and beautiful and it works and on... And five, yeah, five bucks, it's, it's a good value. It works on your iPhone or iPod Touch and iPad, so you could, which I love using on both devices. It's a great it's game. It's a terrific game from Chair Entertainment Group. Donald Mustard and the guys over there. It was Colonel Mustard. Made, uh, it was his dad. <laughs> they made a terrific game. Um, in fact, an interesting thing about Infinity Blade, this uh, originally the game started as a Connect game. Oh. Which actually kind of makes sense so now that you think you were swipe. just doing yeah, swiping, yeah, yeah. Okay, simple basic sense. motions, and then they translated it beautifully into uh, an iOS iPhone game. That's an interesting little piece of trivia. Well, let's move on to our next category, which is App of the Year. Mm. Our app of the year this year, I really thought long and hard about this, and I wasn't quite sure what to give it to, but then after, you know, a couple weeks ago when Google Maps updated to with the vector graphics and everything, I mean, it was really incredible. So my app of the year goes to Google Maps. Mm. And I know that it's sort of one of those things. For me, it's my number one must-have on any Android device. It's the thing that I use the most. I use Maps all the time. Um, and, you know, any other device should have Google Maps on it. The addition of vector-based imagery, offline functionality really sealed the deal for me. Mm -hmm. And on top of that, it's just, it's really robust and amazing what Google has done with Maps, especially now at 5.0. And I'm really excited to see, um, you know, where they go with it next year. But this year, I think it really shined in terms of all of the functionality it brought. And also, it gave a lot of people free navigation, which is huge. Right, that's great. So, I, I mean, Google Maps for me, all the way. That's a great service. Yeah. yeah. What about you? What's your app of the year? Well, for me, I went with a nice, I went with Flipboard. It is a very nice Flipboard app. Flipboard for iPad. Good choice. Um, which is, uh, I mean, it's a... Uh, it's just that it's a way of looking at your Twitter feeds, your Facebook updates, and all some of your favorite sites, and it presents them into a sort of a beautiful sort of magazine format. And you can. And it really is beautiful. It really looks nice, and you can flip through, and instead of just going to the web and going through your bookmarks, you can just and have everything that you like that you check in the morning, or afternoon, have it all in one place. And they just updated it to uh, to really integrate RSS and Google Reader, and Google which Reader, it did not which do is before. a big deal. That's a huge deal. Yeah. So now it just you can it's just your one stop for internet content. One stop, beautiful layout for your internet. And it's content. fast, and you know it's it's easier to look at articles. It looks good, easy to share things with Flipboard. Yeah. Uh, and it's transformed the way I consume internet content. That's important in an app. I mean, it should change the way that you use your phone. And it looks nice and it's great. It's good to show people. So Flipboard, go Flipboard. get it. I think it's free. And it is free. Yeah. You can't beat that. I usually don't like free apps, but that's a good one. But it's, yeah, that's a that's a real winner. Um, best company. Best company, uh, for me, 
Obviously, HTC really nailed it this year, I mm. think. They went from quietly brilliant to loudly awesome and super genius this oh, year. Oh, that's bold. Um, I, I really can't wait to see their tablets, but this year they put out so many great just, just ideas phones, I mean, everything that they did, putting out the HTC Evo 4G when no one else had a 4G mm -hmm. phone, they really knocked my socks out with this, or off, knocked my socks out. That's not, I don't, <laughs> think, that's a, I don't think that's a real <laughs> phrase. Um, they knocked my socks off with yep. the Evo, and you know, and I, the Evo changed the way I used a phone. Mm. Like, I mean, I used my pre, but not to the level right. of integration that I use my HTC Evo. And HTC, I think, really makes just gorgeous software. Um, you know, they even got a version of Sense into the UI for Windows Phone 7. All right, yeah. And I think that ultimately it's it's an amazing, amazing company and I'm really looking forward to see what they give us next year. I as well. I'm looking forward to seeing what they do. Yeah. See if they CES is gonna be real interesting next so week. So fascinating. I wanna see if they what they do with their language, if they keep going down that path of sort of, you know, I still don't like the removable backs and that kind of thing. I'd like to see them just make a, a sealed, solid body because solid body there's some advantages we'll to that. We um, shall see. We shall see. What about you? What's your, Mike, what could your best company of the year be? Hmm. Think I real thought hard about, about this. it. I thought long and hard. I know you had a long list of candidates. But I narrowed it down to five. And at the end of the day, I chose one. I, my best company this year is Apple. Oh my God, that's a shocking Isn't that surprise. That's interesting. I, that's a left field choice. I, know. I almost fell over. I think I need some water. Oh Calm my God. Down. I, I need to take here. a minute. I got to get some air. Like, this is really exciting. Take it in. It's true. I chose Apple. <laughs> it's the best company this year. And okay. It, antenna gate aside, blown out, you know, I think overblown. Antenna gate and overblown. iPhone 4 gate um, white, in a bar. White iPhone. White iPhone 4 gate. Uh, again, they had a lot of gates this they year. They did have a lot of gates. Weird. The antenna gate. Not like them. No, not really. It's true. Not and at so all. people kind of say, oh, they're stumbling, they're having trouble, Apple's losing it, losing the plot. But really, at the end of the day, that's just not true. The iPad completely, you know, told everybody what a tablet should be and what it is going to be for the true. next few years. iPhone 4, huge success, great device, regardless. Um, and still building on the strength of iTunes, still in the App Store, the App Store. Again, the App Store is another thing. Mm -hmm. Changed everything, not this year, huge. but it has been and it keeps mm -hmm. continuing to do so. So Apple this year for me, I think, did the most right things, things that I liked. Perfect. So I choose Apple. Well, our next category is uh, is one that we sort of debated about including, but I really thought it was important, and f I think it would be fun. Uh, our next category is biggest villain. Biggest villain. Who did you? Why? Who did you pick? I think it's pretty obvious who I picked, which is that man right there getting eaten by androids. I picked Steve Jobs as my biggest villain of the year. What this is, guy right here, that guy. <laughs> what the. He was just trouble. I mean, well, I mean, he was, he, mean? that guy is trouble. What like, did he let's do? just all, let's all be straight here. Did that, he do to you? Steve Jobs is trouble. Um, you know, here's the thing. I love a good villain, and Steve just fits the bill perfectly. He is the commander of a very uh, dominating empire. Yep. Uh, everybody wants to take him down, and then you've got the, you know, you've got the Rebel Alliance fighting against the Empire, and you know, it's it's this ragtag bunch of android kids and and developers and people and this big community that's sort of like banding together to take down the man, mm. and uh, and I just think he makes such a great villain, and and his terse responses to people and emails, and he's just he's so good at just getting to the heart of someone and just twisting that <laughs> knife in there, and I think that he makes a great villain, and he is definitely my villain of the year for. 2010. Mike, what, who's your villain of the year this year? Well, to run counter to that, I chose uh, Andy Rubin. Andy so Rubin? A Android chief, creator of Android, really, you could say, and uh, he's had a long, interesting history. And he started tweeting this year for the first time. And he his, did. his first tweet went out, and it was sort of a, a very geeky kind of a jab at the iPhone not being Quite open. A jab. At, at, is defining what open meant, and Android is open. Very. But, I mean, for me, I mean, that's just like. Uh, but I don't get that. If open means carriers putting a bunch of junk on your phone that you can't take off, you can have open. I mean, I don't think it means open for the end user. It means open for carriers and the businesses. I, it's not the, that's not the vision that I want to buy into. Oh, fair enough. Yeah. All right, all right. Andy Rubin, my villain. Andy Rubin is the Luke Skywalker of... What? He's a hero. He, I know. He's a hero. He is the hero of the freaking Android but who's alliance. Who's Steve? Is he Darth Steve Vader or the, the Emperor? Emperor? He's the Emperor. Who's Darth Vader? Uh, probably John, Waz. Or maybe Johnny Ive. Yeah, okay. I Maybe Waz. Mm. I like the idea of Waz as, as, as <laughs> heavy, Darth Vader. Heavy, it's just weird. Heavy Darth Vader. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> kind of a chubby Darth Vader. <laughs> <laughs> All right, our very last category is best overall device. And I think you guys are going to be really shocked. Yeah, I know Mike was. 
All right. I fell backwards. You did. I hit my head. I know. That's why we're a little bit giddy today. Ooh. I was. I laughed at him for hours. <laughs> hitting I was his in head. pain. Was yeah, in he pain. was in pain. It was very funny. Um, my best overall device for 2010, and please save the comments in the peanut gallery, is my best overall device is the iPad. <gasps> I'm gasping for real. And it's a real shocker, not like you picking Apple as your favorite company. No. Um, you know, and let me explain myself. I think that the iPad is an incredible device in that, like you said, Mike, everybody was skeptical about it. Everyone said, this is a giant iPhone. No one's going to use this. What is the purpose of this thing? Mm. Um, and it, it came in and it blew the doors open on the tablet market and it has paved the way for what I believe is going to be the year of the Android tablet next year. And so for me, it's, I respect it for what it is, mm. which is, it is an incredible device. I like using it. I think it's very intuitive. Mm -hmm. It's fun to read books on it. It's a little heavy and a little large for my taste. Mm. But at the end of the day, I respect it for what it's done for the tablet industry, and I'm very excited to see how Android takes that now and uses it next year, and how, and also how Apple really improves on the iPad, because there was nothing like it before. Mm -hmm. I mean, they, there have been tablets before, eh. but they've never been like this. No. And I really, really have to give credit to Apple for breaking open the tablet industry and, and giving other manufacturers a reason to make things like this better, faster, stronger, and to really compete. Mm -hmm. And so for me, the, the device of the year, because I respect what it's done, I respect the numbers behind it, is definitely the iPad. That's right. Yeah, they created the target for other people to reach. I mean, yeah, they created an entire market mm -hmm. for, for something that nobody imagined people would just go nuts for. I mean, for. yeah, seriously, that's interesting. That market was there, but no one had a device that would was that was there ready even for people close. to buy. Not even close. Even close to, to filling that niche. And nobody even, I don't even think people knew they needed one. <laughs> no, like a that's, tablet. Yeah, that's right. Like, And once they used it, they realized, oh my gosh, like this thing is amazing. I love, I love this tablets. Thing. And, and using the Galaxy Tab, a couple weeks ago mm -hmm. really showed us like you know the development of tablets is really going to speed up very quickly but you know what's interesting about that is that the tablets that google have been showing with um what's the tablet operating system called the next one honeycomb yeah honeycomb they've been showing it on 10 inch tablets they haven't been showing it on anything on smaller yeah they've been showing it on That's 10 inch, which is like the size of the, well, iPad. It's the the only tablet they've been showing it on is the new motorola tablet mm -hmm. which is supposed to be a verizon tablet mm, right and i think we're going to see that at ces yeah, we'll see that might be the way that might be the way forward but supposedly htc is making two different a 10 inch and a seven inch tablet to see but uh, you know i mean like the ta galaxy tab you know you're seeing the prices being discounted already on the tab so yeah. i don't know if people are it we'll see as steve said maybe we'll see we'll see mm. i don't think it's doa no, no, it's too early to say that. Yeah. Too, early. too early. Too early. What about you, too Mike? Soon. Best overall device? <sighs> uh, it's iPhone 4. Of course I it picked is. the iPhone 4. It's got um, the design, the industrial design. Still, no one is even, I'm telling you, there's no one's close to this in terms of ID, right? Who, who approaches this? Everyone's still using plastics, you know, whereas Apple has graduated to metal and glass. It's beautiful. And attenuating antennas. Um, which is overblown. And so you have your uh, display, and you have the, the design, the build, um, the app store. The overall speed of the OS, even though it's you know you don't have fancy things like the live wallpapers and some of the things you can do, but the speed of the OS is always there, and I love that. So for me, because it's not doing much. But it's doing what I want it to do. It's doing the functional thing. That's not hey, showing me. Widgets are functional. Uh, well, I wasn't talking really much about oh. widgets, but uh, okay. but it needs. I see what you're saying. But I'm saying, but uh, I think it'll get widgets. Oh. It, it does need something like that. Someday. I think it'll come. But for now, for me, this is still the best combination, the best of all worlds, uh, the iPhone 4. So that's my device of the year. Your device of the year is the iPhone 4. Well, ladies and gentlemen, that is our best of 2010. Oh, boy. Pretty uh, quick, painless. Well, There's... I don't know. I'm, I'm sure I'm going to get a ton of tweets about how freaking, like, insane I am for choosing the iPad. Everyone's going, what? But well, I, I mean, think I'd be I have a good reason no, for curious, choosing it. I'd be curious to hear their arguments of what they would have chosen instead. Yeah. Well, here's, here's what we're going to do. We're actually, part of our Android army is going to be given away. We're going to play the giveaway game with our best of 2010. It's going to be this little guy right here. We're going to bring him forward, and it's going to be the guy who's eating Steve Jobs' head. So it's going to be this little guy. We're going to give away two of the little green guys. The two green ones. The two green dudes. So these dudes. <laughs> um, and this is what we want you to do. We want you to tweet me, at Android Ashley. Or you can email us if you have a longer answer, 
at uh, mobile at thisweekend.com and we want you to tell us what your category for best of 2010 would be. None mm -hmm. of the ones that we've used today. No. You have to think of a new category and you have to give us your answer and tell us why. Mm. So like if you want to say best uh, best dolls and they're this little Android dolls and they're the greatest. That's a legitimate answer. And I love them and you can send us that. That's fine. And we're going to give away two. I'm going to pick a favorite answer and Mike's going to pick a favorite answer. And your answers will be judged not only on awesomeness, but also creativity. And if you make us laugh, you have a much higher chance of winning. So um, we're going to give them away when we come back from CES. So it'll be a couple weeks. Right. But um, but we are going to give away two Android dolls, and then I think maybe we're going to try to get some Apple swag um, in, and we'll try to we'll, we'll try, try to do a giveaway maybe in like fe um, early February. Yes. So but for right now, two Android dolls up on the line. Here they are. They're waiting for you. They're so excited. Look, take me home win i hope you win that's what they're saying they are so pleased. think of your category send it to us again mobile at thisweekend.com or tweet me at android ashley and and we really look forward to all your answers yeah. i'm excited to read them yeah. um as always that's all the time we have for our very last show of 2010 mike are you sad it's over i can't believe we've been doing shows oh, for over man, six it's months hard, hard to believe hard very to believe, hard to believe but you know it's uh, the future is so exciting i can't wait to see what next year has the in future store is next week at ces for us at C next week uh, it's gonna be terrific we're gonna have so much fun so you uh i'd like to of course thank our sponsor vopium vopium.com reach the world for less hmm. uh get it on your any uh, pretty much any of your mobile phones any, you can get it any. if you have any kind of app store you can probably get vopium oh yeah <laughs> easily and uh, i'd also like to thank youtube for putting us online keeping us up you can find us at youtube.com slash show slash this weekend subscribe to us rate shows watch back episodes and you can also follow us on twitter android ashley mike's valis 23 and the show is twi underscore mobile and if you're using an iphone or an ipad like mike does you can get this weekend app and, and watch on the go which is pretty awesome yep it's awesome you can watch us on the go because we're exciting like that. On the go, yeah. Yeah. And be sure to check out all of the other great content we have on youtube.com slash this weekend. We've got plenty of shows. We won't disappoint you. On behalf of everybody here at the This Weekend Network, I'm Ashley Esqueda. I'm Michael Hobbs. And that's been our best of 2010. You guys have a great new year, and we'll see you in 2011. Goodbye. <laughs>